This is by far the wettest walkthrough that I ever done. We went out to the sea while it was still sunny and you can see what we have now. It's pouring rain, uh, end of May, South Turkey, very weird. We are visiting today New Ocean 68 that was built in 2008 by a shipyard from Taiwan. Uh, the boat is sold from the third owner. Uh, she's in a good condition. There are a few things to, uh, to refine here in terms, especially in terms of uh, cosmetics. I will point out as we can. Since we have uh, heavy rain around us, uh, we had to take the cushions inside, so you will not see most of them outside, uh, but you will see them inside in the salon. Anyway, we'll try to represent this boat at uh, her best in these conditions. Let's start. So here we are in the flybridge. As you can see, the weather conditions are not getting better, but we are going to do the walkthrough anyway. Um, we are at the flybridge. Quick look around. The instruments are here. They are covered mainly from Raymarine. I'm not going to open it now because it's wet. Uh, there is a plotter here, E120, wind indicator, uh, the two uh, uh, engine digital uh, controllers. The engines here are Caterpillar uh, C4212. Uh, uh, I hope I'm not wrong, but I will put it in the website. Um, autopilot from uh, Raymarine. Uh, there is a Nyad stabilizers here, fin stabilizers, a bow thruster and aft thruster. So we are looking around. The whole cushions are completely wet from the rain. Those we couldn't put inside. It's a very nice flybridge. So sitting area here, it will sit comfortably six people, probably uh, eight people. I didn't mention in the intro, the boat has uh, three cabins for six guests and accommodation in one cabin for two crew. Um, we will see it as we go along. Um, this video is going to be long. I'm going to put uh, chapters at the video description below and by clicking them, you can jump from one part of the video to another. You will also find there a link to the web page of the yacht, which you will see photos, uh, spec list and additional information. So this is, uh, we have a wet bar here, electrical griller and sink. Let's see. Yeah, and here, this is the starboard side. We have a very large fridge, probably 150 liters. You can put tons of, uh, of uh, drinks here and uh, maybe some other things. Maybe it can be divided better so the capacity can be used. Not complicated thing to do. Now this flybridge has a hard top, as you can see. And let's move uh, slightly astern on the flybridge. There is a Bezenzoni um, crane. Uh, the British, the the boat is uh, registered under British flag. Uh, she was built to CE certificate category A. And from here, we will go downstairs and we will check the aft deck. I'm going to close this hatch behind me. Oops. This one to avoid the rain. And here we are. It's a nice size aft deck for the size of the boat. And again, you must excuse us for a little bit of, uh, that the boat is not perfect because this rain came quite sudden and we had to fold a lot of things inside. As you can see, everything is soaking wet. Now there is a huge uh, swimming platform here, uh, which accommodate the dinghy. 
Uh, it's a, a hydraulic swimming platform, goes down to the sea, takes the dinghy and goes up. A beautiful uh, swimming area, a large Bezenzoni passerelle, a long one, probably four meter at least. So we go now to see the uh, the cabins and the inner part of the boat and our last station today will be the engine room if the rain will allow us I will do I will do also a deck tour now it's just too wet so let's go to see the interior of the boat so here we are in the salon Let's have a quick look around first. Large TV here uh, on the wall, on the back wall. Uh, it can be viewed actually from nearly any corner and any spot uh, in the salon. Either it's going to be the dining table, which unfortunately is full with cushions now, which we try to save from the rain. Uh, it's quite a large uh, seating area. Uh, it will easily accommodate uh, six, seven, maybe e uh, even eight persons around it. Uh, on the other side, on the starboard side, there is a very large sitting arrangement with small or not so small coffee table. And from this area, you can also watch the TV which is here ceiling condition looks very nice the material of the of the seating uh, arrangement uh, is leather and it looks in very nice condition so we are moving slightly forward this is the dining table I'm sorry I cannot show you all of it, but it's a, it's in nice condition, varnished. We have a sliding bar here, quite nice. And here you can arrange some tableware, table maps and so on. Now, there are stairs here which leads uh, back to the flybridge, so you can reach the flybridge either from the stairs that you showed me arriving to the main deck or from this area. Very clear and uh, large uh, electrical panel. Everything is very well marked in English language. This is a 220 volt and this is the inverter panel an additional 220 volts uh, panel uh, here in the starboard side there is a door which leads to the deck out to the deck and on the port side there is a fairly large galley Bosch fridge it has a lock, safe lock here. Now we, we can open it. Working surfaces. Stove from Bosch. Sorry, from Siemens. Oven from Siemens. And dishwasher from Siemens as well. Quite a deep sink and additional working surfaces. Now, looking back to the starboard side, there is the uh, inner helm station, two uh, captain's chairs. They are electrically controlled, as you can see from here. Um, down here, we can see the generators, uh, gouges, bow and aft thrusters, throttles, 
Uh, we have here the control for the NIAD uh, stabilizers. I'm not familiar with this panel, but I see that there is a lot of adjustments here uh, that you can make. The two Caterpillars engine uh, controller, uh, the E120 Raymarine plotter, and additional gouges for depth, uh, speed, wind indicator, and the autopilot, which is down here. So basically you have everything you need to control the boat from here. Uh, VHF radio from Raymarine and some uh, controllers uh, for uh, pumps and so on. Let's have a quick look back to the salon from this area. The boat feels pretty large for a 68 foot. And turn back the camera forward and from here we will go down below to the guest cabins and and let's check them and explore them. So five stairs down and a small corridor which is good news because it's it means that the space has been used efficiently. Uh, a quick look around and understanding the general arrangement. We have a VIP cabin here in the forward uh, here on the port side there is a guest cabin um, here in the starboard side there is a service room we are going to visit it and back there there is the master cabin amidships so let's start with the service room which is here in the starboard side very large uh, working surface um, down here and a lot of uh, storage up. Uh, there is this board which fits the guest cabin for a small child additional sleeping area. I will show it as we go to this cabin. Down here we have a washing machine from Bosch, dryer from Siemens, storage space, and a fairly large freezer which is always good to be to have on a boat so this is just a, a service room which makes uh, the boat very efficient in terms of uh, storage and keeping all the the mess and the dirty laundry inside so our next cabin will be the guest cabin it's a double bed cabin we just crossed the corridor It has two port lights to provide a fresh, uh, fresh air when it's possible to open, when it's safe to open, a natural light. And this is the ensuite for this cabin. The marble surfaces looks clean and unscratched. Toilet and a reasonable size shower. We are going back to the cabin. And out to the corridor. And we are turning left, which is forward. And we are just going to visit the VIP cabin. very good height it has a large hatch on the ceiling which provides a lot of natural light and can be opened for fresh air when it's allowed here on the starboard side the ensuite sink toilet and then again good size shower Everything looks clean and odorless. There are a few guests with the owner at the moment, so you see quite a lot of personal belongings and the boat is not 100% tidy. But aside from that, she's uh, clean and the interior seems to be in uh, uh, fair condition. 
Siemens, uh, sorry, Samsung TV here on the wall facing the, the, uh, the VIP bed. And we are stepping outside to the VIP, from the VIP cabin, uh, looking astern, going into this small corridor. This is the double bed cabin. This is the service room. And we will proceed astern, going down three stairs and checking the master cabin. There is a door which is separating the cabin, which is this one. And let's have a quick look around. It's a full beam master cabin. It feels very spacious. Now on the starboard side, there is a dressing corner with a small stool down here. And some storage space and a hanging locker. There is a, a walk-in wardrobe just behind this door, which is quite packed and messy now. Um, not sure where the light is. Yeah, okay. So hanging arrangement, large mirror, more hanging arrangement down here below drawers and plenty of space to uh, store your uh, luggage and suitcases. We are turning uh, back into the this large master cabin, seeing it from this angle. And let's move to the other side. We have a, a large TV here from Samsung facing the bed. Here on the other side, which is the port side, another uh, hanging locker and a sitting arrangement. And let's go to check the ensuite. Same marble top here, sink, in addition or to the other cabins, it has a bidet and toilet and quite a large shower, as you can see here. So we are, we are going back to the cabin Last look at the master cabin. And we are stepping outside, going back to the main deck. And from there, we will go to explore the crew cabin and the engine room. And there I will give you additional technical explanation about the boat. So we are back to the main deck. Gali is here. Helm on the other side. Stepping astern. Salon again. Dining table. And as I'm speaking, the rain seems to stop. And here we are at the aft deck again. And from here, we will go down to check the engine room. It's still dripping slightly. As you can see, we are on the move back to the marina. These guys are going to help us to move the boat. And let's go to see the crew cabins and the engine room. Three stairs down. Our first station is the crew cabin. There are two beds here, up and down, and storage 
uh, under the upper bed for personal belongings. Turning the camera, looking astern, there is a TV for the crew, air condition control, some sockets. It's a pretty nice uh, crew cabin for two. It has its bathroom just across the corridor on the port side. Reasonable size, same finish standard as the guest cabin, shower, sink, and toilet. Behind this uh, opening, there is a technical area which accommodate the uh, rudders, super massive. Uh, I'll put in the website some photos of the bilges so you can understand how robust is this boat. Um, we can see kind of a tiller for uh, emergency steering and uh, this plastic barrel is accommodating the shore power cable, additional technical systems down here below. Everything looks uh, quite robust and uh, the construction uh, looks in good standard. Okay. Our last station for today will be the engine room. Let me shut down the light here. Okay. Going back to the corridor, uh, we have a, a, a door here to the engine room. And here we are in the engine room. Quick look around before we go into the details. Moving forward, so in the in the heart of this engine room, there are two caterpillar engines, each one with 1,400 horsepower and with 1,250 running hours. The model is 3412. Air conditioning system up there, there are two units. Um, Normally, the, one of the generators will hold uh, the smaller generator, which is 10 kilowatts, which I'm going to show you soon, uh, can hold one of the uh, systems. And if you want to use both of them, you will need to use the larger generator. Uh, there is a, a CO2 uh, tank here for uh, fire extinguishing for the engine room. Uh, this is the Hydro 4 that provides uh, water pressure. There's 1,000 liters of uh, water here in the tanks. Um, Nyad Marine, this relates to the stabilizer system. There are fin stabilizers here from Nyad. Uh, the total uh, capacity of fuel on this boat is 5,000 liters. It divided in two tanks, one here, one on the other side. Water maker from uh, Technicomar, so that compensate the relatively not large uh, capacity of fresh water. Two generators here from Northern Lights, uh, 20 kilowatts. This one has uh, about 4,000 running hours. Let's check it together. Yeah, 3,965. And the other generator is also from Northern Lights, 10 kilowatts, and now it has 1,968. Uh, some uh, electrical panels. This is the main switches for the for the batteries. Um, a large inverter here from uh, Xantrex. Additional um, uh, electrical panels here. Here on the port side, we have three chargers, one for the service batteries, one for the main engine, and one for the generator. Now, looking at the back side of the engine, we see the PTOs. Uh, there is a large PTO here and another PTO here. They provide uh, hydraulic power to the stern thruster and the bow thruster. A uh, pretty simple engine room, quite accessible from uh, nearly any side. Um, 
well constructed, good light. That's it. So that was the new Ocean 68. If you need to learn more about this boat, you can visit our webpage by using the link at the video description below. You can always contact me directly. Here we are back in the port. It was very rainy. Now the rain stopped. Light wind.